back to my channel. I hope you're all having a magical start to your day. I'm here today with a video that makes my heart very, very happy because it combines two of my all-time favorite things, Disney and food. Disney treats to be exact. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make four homemade Mickey Mouse shaped treats that you would typically see at Walt Disney World. This is probably the most fun I've ever had filming a video and I'm really proud of the way that they all came out and I hope that you all enjoy them as well. Let me know in the comments below what your all time favorite Mickey shaped treat is. Mine is definitely a toss up between the Mickey Mouse pretzel with cheese and the signature Mickey Mouse ice cream bar. So that's it for this intro. If you have any other questions or concerns, just ask them in the comments below and without further ado, we're going to get right into this video. To make these Rice Krispie treats, you're going to start off with a fourth of a stick of butter and throw that into a pan over a low heat. If you do a high heat, the butter is going to burn. So just get that melted down, and once it's all melted down, you're going to take a bag of the Jet Puffed Marshmallows. These are the 10 ounce bags, and throw that on in, stirring it gradually until all of the marshmallows have melted. Once all the marshmallows have melted down, you're going to take the pan off of the heat and then add in five to six cups of Rice Krispie cereal and just mix it all up. It is going to get a little tough because it's going to be very sticky, but just make sure you're using a little bit of elbow grease because you want to make sure that all the cereal is incorporated with the melted marshmallows. Take an oil spray and spray down your pan entirely. This is really important so that your Rice Krispie Treats don't stick to the pan later on. And then just take your Rice Krispie Treat mixture and pour it onto the pan and spread it all around. I find that taking a wax piece of paper and pushing it down really helps. It won't stick to your hands and it really helps to spread out the Rice Krispie Treats very evenly onto the pan. Now take your Rice Krispies and put them into the refrigerator for about five to seven minutes. To make the Mickey Mouse shape, you're going to need a Mickey Mouse head mold. I got this from Walt Disney World, but I know that you can get it on Amazon as well, and it is very cheap, and I believe it's under the Prime, so it should come to your house in about two days if you have Amazon Prime. Just take your mold and push it into the Rice Krispie Treats, and then just pull them on out. It comes out very, very easily if you use that cooking spray. This next step is optional. You can of course keep your Mickey Mouse Rice Krispie Treats exactly how they are, but I wanted mine to be a little more authentic like the ones that you can get at Walt Disney World. So I'm taking some dark chocolate or milk chocolate. I just happen to be using dark chocolate and I'm melting it down. Then I'm taking the ears of the Rice Krispie Treats and I'm dipping them right into the chocolate, banging it down so that all that excess chocolate goes right back into the bowl. And finally, to add just a little bit more fun to these bad boys, I'm taking some colorful sprinkles and pouring them on top of the ears while the chocolate is still wet. And there you have it, a chocolate dip Mickey Mouse Rice Krispie Treat. These were so visually appealing and even more so, they were absolutely delicious. I brought these over to a birthday party and I received so many compliments on these. They were extremely easy to make and again, just so stinking delicious. This next Mickey Mouse shaped treat is my favorite of the video. You're going to start off with some Pillsbury pizza crust, open up the container, and then roll it out on some wax pieces of paper. I don't have a rolling pin, so I'm using a wine bottle, but just use whatever works for you. Then cut out two rectangular strips. Mine were about two inches wide. And take one of those strips and cut it in half. Then you're going to take some Nutella, place it in a Ziploc bag, cut off the tip, and just squeeze out the Nutella into the center of each of the rectangular pieces. Now all you want to do is enclose that Nutella into the rectangular pieces of dough and I just did this by pinching the pieces together. The dough was very sticky so it stuck together with no problem at all. Mm -hmm. 
Now you just want to take the dough pieces and assemble them into a Mickey Mouse shape. I'm just taking the ears and pressing them down into the dough. Like I said, the dough was very sticky, so it had no issue sticking with each other. Next, I took some melted butter, dabbed it onto the dough, and then finally, I took my cinnamon sugar and poured it all on top, placed this into the oven on 350, and I let it bake until it got brown. It took about 10 to 15 minutes, and look at how beautiful it is. Oh, it was so visually appealing again, and on top of it, this was probably the most delicious thing I've ever had. I cannot believe I live my life without making one of these. This was so easy to make and on top of it was just seriously the most delicious dessert I think I've had in a really, really long time. I highly, highly suggest everybody making one of these at least once in their life. To make these cut apart cookies, you're going to need six tablespoons of semi-melted butter along with half a cup of granulated sugar and you're also going to need about one to two tablespoons of vanilla extract depending on how sweet you want these cookies to be. The next thing you want to do is mix it all together. You can of course use a hand mixer for this but I don't have one of those so I'm just using a fork and it works just as well. Once your butter, sugar, and vanilla extract is creamed together, you want to add in one egg and continue to mix it until everything is incorporated. Next, you want to add the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients, and you want to start off by adding one and a half cups of flour, but mixing it every half cup. So I'm adding in a half a cup of flour, mixing up the batter, adding in another half a cup of flour, mixing up the batter, adding my last half cup of flour, mixing it, but halfway through, you're going to add in half a tablespoon of salt, along with half a tablespoon of baking powder, and finally, mix it all up until all the ingredients are incorporated. Once your batter is complete, you're going to put it on some saran wrap and then wrap it up in the saran wrap and put it into the refrigerator for about an hour. After the hour has passed, you want to take some flour and sprinkle it onto a wax piece of paper. This is just going to alleviate some of the stickiness of that dough. Then place your dough on top and then add a little bit more flour on top of that dough. Add another piece of wax paper on it and then you need to roll the dough right on out. Peel back that first layer of wax paper, then take your Mickey Mouse mold, press down, and start cutting out all of your cookies. After you're done cutting out all your cookies, place them on a greased baking sheet and put this in the oven for about 20 minutes or until they are golden brown. The next step is optional, but I wanted to dip mine in chocolate, so I just melted some chocolate. I'm taking the bottom of the Mickey Mouse cookies and I'm just dipping them into the chocolate, then placing them on some wax paper until they harden. And this is what your final delicious treat looks like. This was a mix between a shortbread cookie and a sugar cookie, just the perfect amount of sweetness. And if I can just make one suggestion, it would be if you are trying to make cut apart cookies, really stick to a recipe, whether it's this recipe or one that you find on Google. Try not to get the roll of cookie dough that you can get at the market because those will just expand and they will never keep their shape. So yeah, just really try to use a recipe and you'll have perfect cut apart cookies. And for the final treat of this video, we are going to be making Mickey Mouse cake pops from scratch. Start off by taking some pre-made cake and just crumbling it up into a bowl. I just did it by taking my fingers and ripping at the cake and all the crumbles came right out. Next, take a generous scoop to a scoop of a half of frosting, throw it into the cake crumbles and start mixing it around. I find that less is more when making these. If you use too much, it's going to ruin your batter, but if you use a little bit and find out that you need more later, you can always add more into the mixture later on. You'll know that your cake pop batter is ready when it looks more like a paste. If you grab it and you squeeze it together, it will stay formed together and it won't crumble apart.
Now just take a handful of that batter, squeeze it together, and really add some pressure to this while you are squeezing it and rolling it together. The whole point of this is that it is going to stick together when you're putting it into the chocolate. So again, just squeeze and add a lot of pressure while you are rolling these into little cake balls. Here's where the fun comes in. You're going to take some Oreo minis and you only want the cookie pieces. You do not want the cream for this pot, so I just scrape the cream right on out. You're going to take two of these little Oreo minis, dip them in some melted chocolate, and then just push them right into these cake pops. It's going to act as the ears. With your semi-frozen Mickey Mouse cake pop, you're going to take a popsicle stick or you're going to take a cake pop stick, dip it into some chocolate, and then push it right into the bottom of the Mickey Mouse cake pop. Then I took all of my cake pops, put them back on the wax piece of paper, and froze them again. While I was freezing them, I started off with the little yellow buttons. I am taking some of the Starbursts. They're the little mini ones. They're the unwrapped ones, they're called. And I'm taking all of the yellow ones apart. You can basically use any candy with this, but I find the Starbursts Starburst, excuse me, are very moldy. Moldable. So I'm just cutting each one of them into four and then I'm taking my fingers and I'm molding them into little ovals. Now we are ready to add our first coating of chocolate. I cannot stress this enough. Try to do these one at a time out of the freezer. It is really important that your cake pops are frozen when you're putting them into the chocolate or they will crumble apart. So just take your whole cake pop, dip it right into some red chocolate, and then you're going to take your cake pop and tap it on down. The reason we are doing this is that the chocolate is going to be really, really thick and you want all that excess chocolate to just drip right back into the bowl. Once you have it done, you're going to place it into a cake pop holder. I bought this from Michael's and it's really not the greatest, I would highly suggest just using some styrofoam instead. Once the first layer of chocolate has hardened, then you are ready for the second layer of chocolate. For this time, we're going to take some chocolate or some dark chocolate and you're only going to push it down about halfway. Again, be very gentle with this. Just push it down about halfway, take your cake pop out again and then just tap it down so that all the excess chocolate goes right back into the bowl. And the final step to completing these Mickey Mouse cake pops is to take your yellow candy and just place it on the chocolate while the chocolate is still wet. And there you have it, your very own Mickey Mouse homemade cake pops from scratch. I am obsessed with making these and I'm even more obsessed with eating them. The flavor combination of the soft cake inside and the hard chocolate shell is just everything. And I think that these would be really fun for any kids party that is Disney themed or Mickey Mouse themed. it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun filming it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a magical day and I will talk to all of you soon. Bye guys!